right, well, look at them get down. A shout out to the Ocean of Soul, Texas Southern University's marching band. This last Monday of Black History Month, we are taking it to the yard. Now, did you know that the city of Mahia was once home to a historically black college? Well, it may be news to you. That's why the elders of Mahia have been on a mission to put St. Paul Normal and Industrial College back on the map and their efforts just paid off big time. Six News reporter Adriana Alexander woke up early with us this morning to share the story. Hey Adriana, good morning to hey, you. Hey, good morning Jasmine. I definitely woke up early, but I'm definitely glad to be here. More than 70 years ago, the town of Mejia was home to an historically black college. Now the Mejia community is joining together to tell the story of this HBT HBCU to make sure the name will never be forgotten. Here in this small town of Mejia, Texas, with a population of over 7,000 people, a prominent school once stood in the middle of town. We're a small community, but we do have historical value. Schools like Prairie View A&M or Texas Southern probably come to mind when you think of historically black colleges and universities in Texas. You may not know about St. Paul Normal and Industrial College, the first and only HBCU in Central Texas, established right here in Mejia. So it surprised Skylar Carter when she found out her great-grandfather, Lee Wilder Thomas, was one of the founders. He established this church. We grew up in this church. So when I really thought about it, it really wasn't that far-fetched that he had such an integral part in establishing this school. The idea for St. Paul first took shape in 1906 with members of the Primitive Baptist Church. In 1912, Thomas found oil on his land and his wealth quickly increased. When you get to the hill in the Mahia where the college is, it's more dry, more arid, looks more like mesquite trees and things like that. And that's where the majority of black people live on that side. So when they found the oil, the majority of people who got money from the oil boom were black families. Thomas was passionate about the progression of black Americans. So in partnership with the church, Thomas invested $9,000 of his oil earnings into funding St. Paul. This is equivalent to over $150,000 today. Many other black locals also pitched in to make this college happen. Field slaves and those sharecroppers who didn't have much money, not much means, took their earned means to build this college. After years of construction, St. Paul opened in September of 1929 with 35 students. The normal schools were established to teach students to become teachers. And that industrial aspect of it is, you know, so, so important, especially in the area of Limestone County, in the areas, you know, rural areas being able to fix and to to mend and to be that uh, that support. Students at the school were trained mainly to become educators and trade courses were also available. The school was a life changer for black people in Mejia, but like many small colleges, its finances were unstable. There was actually a point where they actually lost the college around 39. Uh, Reverend Thomas was able to sign a note uh, with a local banker, well, the estate of a local banker, and actually get the college back. They had a 10 year note and they got it back in three years. It just lets you know that where there's a will, there's a way. Even after paying off debt early, the school couldn't survive the Great Depression. The school was officially closed in 1953. In an archived article written in the Mejia newspaper, Reverend Thomas explained why the school closed down saying, quote, our obligations continued to increase and for years we were unable to keep up on the interest on the principal of the main debt. All that's left of the school now is broken pillars and carved in bricks. Although the building is no longer visible, families still have connections to its legacy. That's his dad, that's my son's granddad, and that's my son's dad. My father received a certificate from this school in 1946. The Primitive Baptist Church is the last building standing. They owned the 37 acres of land the college was built on. The ministers made it their mission to finish what Reverend L.W. Thomas started. We are now here to resurrect that and to make it what it should be, a recognized, legitimate, high education college for young people 
who are trying to better themselves educationally so that they can better themselves economically. St. Paul was recently approved to have a historical marker, so whenever anyone visits town, they'll always know an HBCU once called Mahaya home. Now the unveiling of this St. Paul historical marker is expected to take place sometime this summer and Six News will for sure be there. Jasmine, I had such a great time putting this story together for sure. I bet a lot of good um, history facts in there. Yes, I'm just yes. watching it like, wow, wow. You know, we're talking as the story is playing. That's a really, really good story. I, I love it. history. And thank you um, to the uh, Texas news team for giving me the idea too. You guys really helped oh, me out with yes, it. Yes, yes. You did a great job with it. I love it. And you are a graduate of an HBCU oh, yourself. Oh, yes, Florida a University, go Rattler. There you go, yes, girlfriend. I know it. So when we put you on this store, we knew that you would do it justice, and that you did. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Adriana. Well, the full story on St. Paul Normal and Industrial College will soon be available on our website, kcentv.com.